In a previous video, I talked about what I considered the top 10 lies told about Africa. The biggest being the disingenuous idea that black people sold black people into slavery. I frequently speak about this oversimplification as we cannot apply 21st century pan-African concepts to 17th or 18th century peoples. The overwhelming majority of African people back then identified in full with their own culture and linguistic group and not skin color or even phenotype. So what's been implied by that statement is ahistorical at best. But this lie about African people is only a subgroup of an even bigger lie, one of the first lies ever told about our ancestors. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Before we get into the greatest lie ever told about Africans, let's not forget some of the more well-known ones. The dark continent trope really became one of the most popular lies told about African people. The idea was that Africans were backward savages with no civilization, with the exception of Egypt, which they consistently place outside the sphere of African cultural achievement. Civilizations like ancient Ghana in West Africa weren't privy to much observation, despite it being known for its vast wealth and powerful military, which Muslim writers wrote about. Archaeological reports highlight ancient stone settlements that are believed to be a precursor to Sudanic civilization in the region, not to mention the art of the Yoruba people, who single-handedly forced the world to acknowledge African ingenuity and intelligence as some try to assign the development of such works to ancient European travelers. There's just too much to ignore when it comes to African civilization. The dark continent trope doesn't have any ground to stand on when we consider ancient Meroitic civilization and the great Kushite rulers who started what some scholars call the African Renaissance, which was perhaps the first renaissance in human history. And let's not forget the largest stone structures south of the Sahara. Great Zimbabwe is just one of many stone structures in the southern African region, revealing the glorious era of Shona civilization. Another lie that consistently makes its rounds in our Western consciousness is that Africans had no writing systems and that they relied on oral communication. Africans used diverse methods to communicate, oral transmission simply being one of them. One of the more popular writing forms in West Africa is called Insibidi, believed to have originated amongst the Ekoi people of Nigeria. This writing form is largely viewed as ideographic or pictographic, conveying messages through symbols. It's interesting that many writing forms in Africa were originally invented for a specific class of people and not intended for public dissemination. For example, Egyptian hieroglyphs were originally only known amongst the priesthood. This is also true for the secret writing form of the Songhai people, who use ideograms to communicate amongst a secret society or religious group. Interestingly enough, this writing form was only revealed to the public in 2010 by a Songhai scholar named Hasini Maiga. When dealing with African scripts, we can point to the Meroitic script of the Kushites, which to this day has not been fully deciphered. And that's really disappointing, as it would have been incredible to decipher Queen Amanorinus' Stella concerning her triumphant interaction with the Romans, in which her primary objectives were met in a treaty. Even Southern Africa has some hidden gems when it comes to writing forms. Joao de Barros, a distinguished Portuguese analyst of the mid-16th century, upon his visit to Zimbabwe, wrote a very important description concerning the discovery of a writing form in one of the vassal kingdoms of the Mwene Mutapa Empire, called Batua. De Barros writes, Over the gate of the building is an inscription, which neither the Moorish traders who were there nor others learned in inscriptions could read, nor does anyone know in what character it is written. We really don't know what Joe De Barros saw, but from his perspective, it seems clear that he viewed what he saw as a sort of writing form which was indigenous to the region. Not even the Swahili traders that accompanied him could decipher it. Unfortunately, we really never hear about this again. Anyway, 
All this babbling I'm doing is for a reason. The lies told about Africa are many, and I really want us to understand the full scope of it and how grossly inaccurate they are. What may have started out as innocent quickly turned into an agenda that we have yet to undo, but by far, the greatest lie told about Africa has nothing to do with civilization, writing, or any of that. The greatest lie told about Africa actually came from a religious idea, and as we all know, religion has been one of the most powerful forces in human history. It's no wonder that this particular lie affected African people so greatly. It's nearly impossible to ignore the Abrahamic religions when speaking about Afro-descended people because these religions are a big part of our history, whether we like to admit it or not. They greatly influenced our spiritual paradigms and worldviews. This lie originating amongst the Abrahamic religions, as many of us know, is called the curse of Ham. I don't want to distract with theological history or debate, but in short, the curse of Ham is a misnomer because the curse was really bestowed upon Canaan. Jewish scholars believe that Ham was the ancestor of all black or African people, and this idea was adopted by Arabs, and then it was strategically broadened by Europeans to justify the enslavement and demonization of African people. This is the greatest lie that has been told to our people, because it didn't just have physical and psychological repercussions, it also added a spiritual component, because some people within our community actually believe that it's true. And in our attempts at lifting this curse through achievement, acceptance, or spirituality, we turned into concerned, aimless wanderers, heightening confusion and self-hate within our community. It's one of the most powerful, invisible enemies we have as Afro-descended people, one that cannot be tangibly debunked. And although the belief in it has diminished greatly, the residuals may still be felt, because no matter our spiritual beliefs today, many of us were raised with this dark paradigm, and so I think it's important for us to speak on it, especially so that we won't pass this baggage on to the next generation. Anyway guys, I'm all out. Do you think this is the greatest lie that's ever been told about African people? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.